<laughs> we all heard the story about Rachel Richardson, the female Duke volleyball player who claims that the, the N-word was yelled at her multiple times, several hours throughout a match between BYU from the BYU student section. The mainstream media, all of these people, just like they do any time they hear this because it fits their narrative, they supported her. They stood with her despite that there was no evidence that this actually occurred. Well, now a week and a half after this is alleged to have happened, after Rachel Richardson gets national media spotlight, which she never would have even, we never would have known her name if she never said and made up this story. BYU has now come out. Not only have they said this didn't happen, but they've apologized to the person that they kicked out of the game. The person who Rachel Richardson pointed to said he said the N-word because they can't find a sliver of evidence. Another hate crime hoax, another Bubba Wallace, another Jesse Smollett, another one of these stories. Jeremy, we knew it from the moment this happened that it didn't sound right because no one just stands there while the N-word's getting screamed at a sporting event at a person. It's not, it's not real. It doesn't exist. Well, what do you know? Here we are. I mean, simple, simple that there's not enough of supply to meet the mainstream demand for racism. So when there's not enough supply, we have to invent something so that we can then virtue signal around it. It's why we continue to see these stories get blown out of proportion every single time because the very thing that they claim that is widely uh, existing in our world that's widespread, racism, it's not really a thing on the widespread level that the media, Hollywood, and the blue check mark brigade continues to want to push. So when there's not enough supply to meet that demand, you have to actually what? You have to invent it. And it's just another ridiculous story and this is why it gets so dismissed so easily by so many people at this point because we are on to their game we've been on to their game for a long time um we roll our eyes at this because we all do live in the real world unlike the people on twitter or, or the people in hollywood or the mainstream weirdos we live in the real world in the real world when you hear a story like this that someone was screaming this at a game at, at, at a black girl at a that's not realistic. Like, that doesn't happen. That's not something that would happen. I, I think Beardo made the point, you know, like, we've seen fights break out at games for far less than this. Yep. And so to imagine that there's people that are just screaming the N-bomb at, at some volleyball game to an attractive young black girl is the most insane, unrealistic thing you could imagine. And only people that only live on social media and never leave their houses, they're the only people that would actually buy into this story. So, yeah, it, this whole thing is so ridiculous. And it continues to hurt, you know, any legitimate concerns that people might have about, you know, people being racist because there might be some small, minor concerns out there. But all you do is validate these these. The, the real racist out there that truly are irrelevant, but the only way they become any, the only way they can get any relevancy is when you, you pretend that it's such a widespread problem when it's not. It's yeah. insanity. It's insane. Yeah. We're so, not deniers by any stretch of the imagination of this. Like if this, I, I, I'd like to think that if any four of us were to be at a sporting event and hear this in the stands with the exception of maybe Ryan, if, if, <laughs> if, if we, if we heard this happen, I would think we would probably take the initiative to go ourselves and go fucking say something. Hey, you piece of shit. What the fuck are you doing? Well, like, like what you bump your head or something. What, what the fuck are you doing? So we're not yeah. deniers by any stretch. But when we see the bullshit, we, we call it out. Yes. Yes. You know, and well, Ryan and, and all, right, Ryan would too. So I know he would. No, I'm that was a joke. In public, so I know. <laughs> when, I, when I first heard about this thing, <laughs> it was a I, good actually, one too. I actually refused to make a video on it because it just seemed too good to be true. You mean a, a person in the stands is calling you the N-word every time you serve, but yet nobody's calling out this person to police next to the student section they did nothing either this was too good to be true and then of course days later it's a hoax this is juicy smoothie 2.0 i guess 3.0 now this is bubba wallace in the news and mike freeman from usa today has still not retracted his story that if you do not believe rachel richardson you are a right-wing conspiracy theorist <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have. Listen, Duke put out this statement 
Uh, the 18 members of Duke University volleyball team are exceptionally strong women who represent themselves, their families, and Duke University with the utmost integrity. We unequivocally stand with and champion them, especially when their character is called into question. Duke Athletics believes in respect, equality, and inclusiveness. We will not tolerate hate and bias. Hashtag hate won't live here. Uh, oh you have, you actually had, I think, Jay Billis's wow. bitch ass. We Jay stand with Billis. him yes. up for Rachel Richardson. So despite the fact that they've come out and, and the BYU has done an, like a huge investigation, not only talking to their fans and their employees, but also to Duke fans and Duke employees, people on Duke's volleyball team, everybody. Nobody heard this. Nobody can say that it happened. Only Rachel Richardson heard this mythical N-word getting thrown around during this game. Because it's a lie. We should have known when the godmother, you know, the godmother who was out pushing this garbage, who was promoted by LeBron James, LeBron James continued to share this story, when it turns out, oh, yeah, this person is actually a racist and despises white people. The reason this story got so much traction is because the people in the background of this right here, Rachel Richardson, the people in the background, young white people, those are like the biggest threat to the this narrative that people – in the woke leftist mainstream entertainment, whether you're talking about sports, whatever, that's the biggest threat for them. They need to bring them down a peg. They will lie. They will do anything they can to besmirch the name of white people because yep. they hate white people. That's yep. why this story got traction. That's why they'll never apologize. They would rather try to make you believe that white people, 18, 19, 20-year-old white people just hate black people so much they're willing to cover all this up. This is a joke. And we knew it from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, again, it, it, you you always have to question these stories when, when they when they come out because the the media and the people that are pushing these stories, they have they have no credibility whatsoever. And all you need is common sense. Again, when you hear the story, it's so unrealistic and it's so like out in left field that it doesn't make sense. And, and, and that's because we live in the real world, whereas the people inventing these stories don't. You know, they're they're just fucking losers that sit on Twitter and that's their life. I mean, this is why social media is a blessing and a curse because it's given everyone a voice. But like I said, it's given everyone a voice, everyone. So those people that are too lazy to leave their house, uh, those people that don't want to do anything in life, uh, it's giving them an opportunity to go on social media and create false narratives and create fake victimhood narratives. And they know that they if they create those fake victimhood narratives, then they suddenly get a lot of attention, a lot of retweets, a lot of, you know, people like LeBron James might retweet you if you're a fake victim because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that. So that just makes people that makes lazy losers that don't want to work for anything in life that want to makes it makes them go out there and like I can create a fake story, too, that didn't happen. And, yeah, it's just a snowball effect at that point.